man, I, I can't get nowhere in life or I don't have money, I have this and that. And I realized the only difference between me, them, or any of us is what we negotiate through life. How many born with a silver spoon in their mouth? What, two percent in the world. So the rest of us have gotten to a level of success or broken the cycle in our families or mm -hmm. even just become a better person by purely negotiating with themselves and then with others. Like most of us start, there was no belief that I could do it, but I remember walking into a store, saw this picture of this guy who like looked like a young Mike Tyson hanging off a pair of jeans, and it was uh, Carl Kanai. And then it just hit me. I thought prior to that, we always thought that you had to be from Italy and France to design. You had to be older and like a... You know, you know the, the guys with the with the tape around their neck, you know, the, the tailors, sure, right? Sure. And so, or, or whatever the fashion designer had looked like in those days. And I thought, I just, I'm just supposed to buy from them. When I saw that, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, then I'm watching a De La Soul video, I remember, and seeing them wearing these hats. It almost looked like a ski cap, but it has like a tie on the top. And I couldn't find that hat uh, anywhere in Queens. I finally find one uptown Manhattan. I, uh, I pay for the, the hat. I come home. I show my mother. I said, look, Ma, go get $40 worth of fabric. I go to the store, get $40 worth of fabric. I come home. I give my mother the, the, the stuff the, to sew the hats. And she says, I'm not sewing this. You're sewing this. <laughs> I sew. Crap, now I got to work at this? <laughs> I sew the hats, and then all of a sudden, I have all these hats and only one head. So anyway, so that, that's when it happened. That's when I went out and sold those hats in the outside on that Good Friday, and I sold eight hundred dollars of worth of hats in one hour. Wow. And that's when it just snapped. It just I just said to myself, wait a minute. I made this with my own hands. I went and sold this to individuals, and nobody was in my way. I didn't have to get a check from a boss. Nobody told me when or to come to work or go to work. I can't get fired from this because of my color creed or whatever the case is. I'm responsible for what's happening here, yeah. and I will either fail because every decision I make, or I'll succeed because every decision mm -hmm. I make. When you're working with the power of broke, it does a couple of things. Number one, it makes sure that you learn the process yourself. You can't afford to hire anybody else. So all those people out there who who pay forty thousand dollars for a website when it really costs five, right? Right. Or you, you can leverage it by bartering or something. Whatever the case yeah. is, right? So you have to learn the process. And what happens during that period of time of learning the process is that when and if and hopefully you get to the point that you are successful, nobody can tell you lies. You can't have somebody say, well, I'm not going to tell you about shipping because, you know, you're firing me and I got to go work it out yourself. I said, get the hell out of the way. I've been doing this for eight years myself, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, you, you, you get and you learn the process, number one. Number two is because you don't have a lot of capital, you focus on the only thing that you can do. You don't drown an opportunity. You don't take a bunch of money and go... Huh, we should try a bunch of stuff. Here right. you go. Here's 10,000 here, 10,000 here, 10,000 here, 10,000 here. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go. All right, what are we going to do with this hat yeah. right now? The first thing to achieve is why do you want to achieve it? Like, what is your outcome? Right. Many of us walk into the room, even into the room, we're talking to ourselves, and they're not honest about the outcome. What is the outcome? Why are you going through the motion? Is it because society has told you that that's what it should be, or is it that? Your parents always wanted that from you, or is it that you have been neglected in some way and you're trying to please a bunch of people that you can't stand? Or is it that you want to change the world? Is it that you know that you being healthier is going to be uh, able to be around in your family's life much longer, or you're going to be able to uh, stop some social injustices? Like, yeah. what is your why, first right. of all? I just started looking at all the, the best things in my life, the, the people that I get to motivate, the, the fact that a little brown boy who's dyslexic from Queens with no money, no nothing, came up in the world and, and hopefully I can empower the next little brown boy, little brown mm. girl or anybody of any color, culture or sexual yeah. preference to be, not the next Damon John, be the next Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey or uh, President Barack Obama. If I can do that, then maybe that's what my life was, uh, you mm. know, it, it, that's what that's what God put me on this earth for. It made me also want to live to leave my daughter's a legacy. I wanted them to be proud of their father, mm -hmm. so I refrained from doing and having a lot of the temptations that I've seen a lot of people fall, yeah. fall short and, yeah. and and get caught up in and nothing wrong with that, we're, we're all human. So when I invest in brands and companies, I invest in them because they're allowing me to be part of their dream, but I'm also mm -hmm. learning from them, which really? is in return allowing me mm -hmm. to go back to my special skill set and improve it.
I was watching a show where a girl was, she was like, she was now living in nature, but mm. she said, I lived in Ireland and I was fighting every weekend <clears throat> in clubs and bars and I realized I was working and I was so miserable, so that was my release. So I was working to fight because I was so damn miserable with my life. And then she started to find causes that she liked. She saved the job, but she would go home at night and put some time into causes that she liked. And she got able to get out of that circumstance and move to someplace else and now she's Doing what she loves, it's, but people right. don't know their why. But people always say, well, I want to be a millionaire. Well, what are you going to do when you get a million dollars? Right. What are you going to do with the money? Some people go, well, I'm just going to keep making money. Well, how are, is, okay, you're going to be a millionaire. So if, if over 65% of the lotto winners are broke three years after winning lotto, same thing with athletes. And football players, yeah. And fo football players, three years out of the league. They didn't know their why. The football player knew his why or, you know, he knew his why of, I want to get that ball or run that play. Mm -hmm. I want to become part of a championship team. Because I love it or because it makes me fulfilled or it's right. fun. Or I it's, love going to the gym. I love, yeah. I love, the, I love, I'm there for competition. You know competition, better than I do yeah. because obviously you are an athlete. If you don't know your why for a million dollars, well, when you get the money, you're going to buy a Bugatti. You're gonna buy 10 cars, but then you just have the Bugatti, right? So yeah, yeah. now what else you need, right? You're gonna buy 10 cars. Are you going to move to Bali and live off $30,000 a year for 10 years, carve canoes, save the turtles, and invest in some stocks because stocks mm -hmm. are gonna average out 12% every year, and you're gonna turn the $600,000 into uh, whatever the case is, and then when right. you come back, like, what are you gonna then do? Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right. Are you gonna buy investment properties and keep doubling down? Many people go through life without their why. No single shark has taught me the most of them, because I learned from all of them. They're all really, really, they all are really fascinating in their space. I think Barbara, though, sometimes is the one that can influence me the most because, really? I, you know, I love marketing and branding, yeah. but I'm a one trick pony. You know, I'll get it on a celebrity, get it on a famous show, or get it on whatever the case is, and then I'll make inventory. Barbara will come with ideas out of nowhere. Really? Just, out, I mean, she pulls it out of the air, and they're brilliant ideas, and they're not, they're very rarely are they similar. I don't write books to write books, and this is my third one in five years, and me being dyslexic, it is not an easy. <laughs> I know the feeling, it, man. It, it's really not easy. Um, I think that a lot of people out there are misinformed. They need, they need, um, they need information, and uh, I think if you look at some, you know, a lot of your books, my books, and various other people, and we happen to know each other, but. I believe that if you read a vast amount of things and you start to see that all these people don't know each other, but they're all saying something very similar, mm -hmm. and if you're applying that to your life, that's how it happened to me by reading uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, or yeah. The Greatest Salesman of Babylon, or Blue Ocean Strategies, all these, and I started to see these things that come come together. It gives you a, a, a it gives you more power to go out and execute. Sure. So the reason I wrote this book is because a lot of people that came up to me and started saying, I can't take control of my life, or, they, or I've heard people say, or, or act like somebody else is supposed to issue them power, or somebody mm -hmm. took power away from them. And I realized that people always thought negotiation, first of all, you're negotiating every minute of your life. And I realized that people always thought negotiation is purely a transactional. When you get to one, you get to the table, I'm sitting across from you, right? And it's not. It's about building influence. Mm -hmm. Then it's transactional, and the transaction needs to be what's in it for the person across the table, mm -hmm. not what's in it for you. And then more importantly, it's it's developing that relationship and letting it grow over the course of time and doing 10, 20, 30, 40 other deals or having 10, 20, 30, 40 other people telling other people how great you are right. to do other deals. Mm. Um, and people always thought that it was like that. So, so I ended up putting it in the book. They say that the first, the one who says the number first uh, is the one that loses and things of that nature. I actually like the negotiation part of laying it on the table. Here's where I'm at with this. Here's what I seek. Um, here's what I want. Here's what I want and here's what value that I can bring to you. Mm. And I think it just takes the, it takes the question out of the room. You know. But what if you could have gotten more? Well then, you, well, then you could have gotten it more, but what if, what if, you, what if you say something and somebody says, "Well, we're not even in that ballpark." Right, right. You can always upsell. You can always right. say, "Here's, here's where I would like to be," and uh, then someone says, "And here's what I'm going to give." And they'd be like, "Ah, oh, well, we want more than that." I'd be like, "Okay, but I'm, I gave you where I was at, but it mm -hmm. cost me more. Right, it cost me more time or energy or product or inventory or mm -hmm. whatever the case is or relationships. You know." Yeah. What do they say? There's only uh, three ways to deal with a customer: acquire a new one, upsell a current one, or make one buy more frequently. 
Imagine the greatest version of yourself walking towards you. What would he look like? What would his energy be? He would be kind, uh, but informative, but also stern and, 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 and tell you when you're, you know, when, when if you ask, or be very mm -hmm. real with you about advice. Mm -hmm. I think I'm living the person that I want to be right yeah. now, you know? Um, I'm, I'm very happy with who yeah. I am, yeah. So imagine it's your last day on Earth many, many years from now. Um, but you get to leave behind three things you know to be true from all the lessons you've learned that you would share with the rest of us here on Earth. That I would leave with other people that they have to constantly educate, keep educating themselves. Number two is that they have to steal away time for themselves mm -hmm. at any given moment with themselves and with their family because you never know when you're gonna leave or somebody else is gonna leave you. And number three would probably be just really learn as much as you can to forgive and to love. 